What if I told you that the fastest way to get into your feminine energy is to look at the guys around you? Let's be for real, there's not a ton of them in their masculine energy. You know, the ones that lead, protect, provide, and do that thing called chasing, also known as pursuing, right? Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna look at the guys that want you to chase them because here's the thing, they have done the Uno reverse on us. They've made us convinced that us chasing them is exactly what they want. But see, what they have conveniently left out is that what they want is princess treatment. So when he says things like, why would I chase a woman when she'll chase me? Or when he asks what you bring to the table, just know that you were in the company of a man who's mastered his feminine energy. So all you got to do is look at the little things that he does and learn from him. Because baby, he's nailed it better than most of you have. What? Woman, you just contradicted yourself. How can a man lead, protect, and provide if he's chasing after you? Chasing implies that you're leading and he's following, and that's not something a masculine man does. That's a simp. The masculine man you crave doesn't need to bother chasing you. Women will naturally flock to him, and all he has to do is choose who he wants. You use the term masculine energy as a buzz phrase to justify your laziness in pure incompetence. You also use it as an excuse to whine and emasculate men for not wanting to be with you. But it's not having the effect you think. All it does is prove to the planet that you're valueless. You're incapable of adding any sort of meaning onto a man's life. You expect this man to put in the work to outmasculine your masculine behavior, but that's work. And men work enough without having to bother with the likes of you because he doesn't need you, he doesn't want you, and he's perfectly fine with going it alone. And that, my dear, is the definition of masculinity. You know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of course we do, sir. I was listening to uh, a conversation with a divorce lawyer and the question that was asked to him was what are the current trends you're seeing as a divorce lawyer and he said the most common thing that he's been seeing as a trend and of course this is not to say for everyone but this is just his experience is that the women are doing everything they are the carers of the home they raise the children they cook they clean and they financially provide and the men disengage and so it's not necessarily that that levels the men up where they feel that they want to you know reinforce their masculinity or find a place to exist within that dynamic of marriage they would rather tap out mm. and remove themselves wow that's what what fantastic work man you have the you have the wisdom of a six or seven thousand year old man that's fantastic we don't have to fill up the whole blackboard after all Okay, let's take a second and break this down. Wives are saying that their husbands do absolutely nothing and that she's forced to be the breadwinner, the caretaker, and I guess the father just hangs around in the bathtub and watches pro wrestling all day, I don't know. But what these wives fail to describe is that generally speaking, it's not that the husband is neglecting his children, it's that he's not doing enough work to her satisfaction. So she complains about the mental load and all of that stuff just to justify her terrible behavior. And the secret that she doesn't tell to this lawyer or anyone else for that matter is that no matter what the husband does no matter how hard he tries she will never be satisfied because that would mean she'd have to give up her title as the empowered leader of the household who is also the oppressed victim naturally after the husband gets tired of constantly being berated by his wife and forced into the spousal kobayashi maru he just checks out because there's no pleasing a woman who's incapable of being pleased and shannon lester had mentioned it and she had said i'm really butchering this and people are going to come for me for it so you know, bear with me. But they asked men, would you be okay with dating or being with women that had a higher salary to you? And their answer was like, yeah, sure, absolutely, no problem at all. And then the second phase of the experiment was they put those men in the rooms with women that were operating at a higher salary. And 80% of those men changed their minds when they were interacting in the same space as the women. Mm -hmm. And also they couldn't even be in a physical proximity to women that were financially more successful than they were. See you later! Well, that's not surprising at all. When a woman makes more than her man, she can't respect him, and women are naturally drawn to providers, and women have been brainwashed into thinking they can provide for themselves, and since corporations are given massive government subsidies in exchange for meeting certain quotas, one of which is hiring women, ladies are making more in the workforce. Therefore, women are now looking for men who make more money than them, and that pool was already incredibly slim to begin with. Any self-respecting man who meets a woman who makes more than him will quickly see that she is insufferable, rude, and just just plain unfriendly. And men would rather be alone than deal with a broad who thinks money counts as a personality trait. Because a man's quest for peace is more important than money. And that's something modern women will never be able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. I know it, your family knows it, dogs know it. 
Male hobbies typically take them outside of the home during the daytime during caretaking hours. Female hobbies often revolve around the schedules of their partner and their children and account for the domestic labor that they are handling and any kind of mental load that they carry. The big difference that I've noticed is that men are able to find time to do hobbies that take them outside of the house during the day, like golf, hunting, rock climbing, um, training for a marathon. All of those things are incredibly long activities and they take you outside of the house during caretaking hours because they typically cannot be done at night. I must have missed 60 minutes. What are you saying? Hey Toots, I know you want to desperately cling on to this notion that straight husbands are somehow these evil movie villains, but that's really not the case most of the time. If we had the resources of those villains, we'd probably be building awesome forts to invite Skeeter over for some good old fashioned siege warfare. I don't see how you could be shocked that men find the time in order to do these things, but I guess that mental load you pretend to have makes you incredibly ignorant. You do know what all these things have in common, don't you? It's a little thing called preparation. It requires scheduling, organization, and advanced planning. It's not something you normally decide to do on a whim. Golf requires tee times, hunting requires permits, and rock climbing requires gear that needs to be prepped. And all of this stuff needs to be scheduled in advance, and you will most certainly be well informed about this long before he goes out. You're just crying because you're a control freak who thinks it's reasonable to have complete dominion over a man's time, and that's just not how it works, sister. Whereas women, who take on more traditional hobbies like gardening, painting, um, reading in a book club, even, you know, socializing with friends because that is a common like hobby of women is just to be with other women. Those things can be done in short periods of time, even yoga, right? Like I love yoga, but I go to yoga for an hour and I typically do it before my kids are awake or when they're in bed, not at 2 PM on a Saturday for four hours. So, um, we are able to and required to typically work our hobbies around the schedules of our families, whereas men's hobbies take them away from that. So get off your ass, let's do some math, 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 math. Okay, let's go ahead and crunch some numbers here. Now, don't worry, I don't wanna overwhelm your mental load, so I'll keep things simple. Let's say that you do yoga for an hour a day, four times a week. There's four hours a week dedicated to yoga. Let's also say that you attend a book club once a week. So that means it's an hour for reading, and we'll say that your meeting lasts two hours. Now, let's add in some time for you to meet up with your friends to drink wine and complain about your straight husbands. There's another two hours a week right there. And let's say your garden requires four hours a week spread over all seven days for watering, weed, and the stewing of your bitter resentment towards your husband. Not including any other hobbies, you're already looking at 13 hours a week just for your hobbies alone. Now, on your husband's side, let's say he goes golfing once a week during the summer. Let's say he makes it an all-day thing and spends six hours for a game. The rest of his time is spent working, sleeping, and putting up with your disrespect. That means this husband is spending six hours a week on his hobby while you are getting to spend 13 hours spread over seven days every day for the next month. So let me ask you this this woman who's getting more time for their hobbies and the reason they're able to do that is because when men get married they gain free time and women lose free time in heteronormative relationships because they take on the unpaid labor and mental load at home and with kids this is bigger gap so men are able to leave the home for those extended periods of time during caretaking hours because they have a support at home most females do not feel like they have the same support when they would like to take take on a hobby. If they were to look at their husband and say, hey, I also would like to take up golfing, but I don't want to golf with you. I want to golf in a women's league and we're gonna golf every Sunday for five hours from noon to five. Are you good to care for the kids? They might be met with a response that that is unfair, that takes them outside of the home, that is putting too much responsibility on the other partner and that is not kind of equal division of labor. What? <laughs> Whoa, that statement was so stupid. I think it honestly gave me a minor concussion. How in the hell did you come up with that conclusion, woman? Do you honestly think that a straight man would really be all that butthurt if you want to take a day for yourself to learn how to golf? How do you know he might not be enthusiastic over this? It would mean that you would learn a sport that he likes to play, and later on, once you get some experience, you guys could go golfing together. That way, you both get out of the house and have another activity you can share as husband and wife. 
You just assume that all husbands are these evil men who want nothing more than to make their wives indentured servants and that makes no sense, especially when you consider that many men out there actually want to emotionally bond with their wives and live a life of peace and stability. Now I get it, your mental load prevents you from actually being a cognizant human being, but come on, your denial of basic reality is so dense that even Madonna herself is telling you to tone it down a bit. Right? Um, so that's, I think, the gripe when it comes to hobbies, that men's hobbies typically require a lot more time. They need to be done during daylight and or caretaking hours. And women have traditionally fallen into hobbies that allow them to either still be at home or work them around the schedules of their family. Even gardening, right? Like often people joke like, oh, women love flowers and gardening. They don't all love that. One of the reasons they might get into it though is because they can do it from their home with their children. So it's something they can do together. And yes, of course, a dad can take his son golfing, but is he really going to do that when he's playing 18 holes with his buddies? Probably not, right? And so this is where kind of the discrepancies are when it comes to hobbies in a heteronormative relationship and why it does matter and plays into the domestic labor and mental load and caretaking of children. You know, you're really just full of shit. There's the job, okay? Well, I'll give you credit, sister. You are definitely carrying a load, but it's not of the mental variety. I can assure you of that. How do I know this? Because you're pointlessly folding laundry while recording a TikTok video. You're trying to paint yourself like an overworked victim while complaining that straight husbands do nothing but play golf and avoid taking responsibility. There is no need for you whatsoever to be recording yourself doing laundry. You're not saying anything that needs to be recorded right away. It's all theatrics for views and comments from militarized housewives. It appears that the only real implied solution here is that the man must sacrifice all of his time to take care of the house, the kids, and you, while you should have the option to go golf and whine like a spoiled brat that your straight husband isn't doing enough to keep you happy. But I for one can't blame the guy for wanting to get out of the house and golf once a week. I've been stuck listening to your drivel for the last three minutes, and I already want to move into the woods and completely give up on society. Oh! And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button. Maybe ring the notification bell, share this video, let's get the word out and give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Keep on keeping on as you strive to thrive and survive in this crazy world. And until next time, peace out, homies.